Welcome to our second lesson on conic sections. Last time we had an overview of different forms of conic sections and their representations. Today we focus on one at a time with the parabola. This is the focus directrix definition of a parabola. A parabola is the set of all points equidistant to a focal point, which is also known as a focus, and a line, which is called the directrix. In this picture, the center point of the concentric circles is the focal point and the line is the directrix. We can number the circles and number the lines on top of the directrix. And the number of the circles can be thought of as the distance of that circle to the focal point. So the first circle has a distance of one from the focal point, and the second circle has a distance of two from the focal point. And the numbers of the lines correspond to the distances to the directrix. So the second line is a distance of two away from the directrix, and so on. And to find points equidistant from the focus and the directrix, we find the intersection of the nth circle and the nth line. So what does this mean? Well, that green point over there is the intersection of the second circle and the second line, meaning it's a distance of two away from the focus and a distance of two away from the directrix. And the third circle and the third line intersection appears there, fourth line and fourth circle, fifth line and fifth circle, and so on and so forth. And if you continue the pattern, you have a curve. And because the circles are appear on the right and the left, you can continue this pattern. This again is another point. That's the intersection of the third circle and the third line, fourth circle and fourth line, fifth circle and fifth line, and so on. All these points are equidistant from the focus and the directrix, and a parabola is formed. So you can see that, in fact, a parabola is the set of all points equidistant from a focal point and a line. The purpose of today's lesson is to be able to translate this geometric definition of a parabola into algebra. And we'll be doing this in a series of tasks. And so the first thing I'm going to ask you to try to do is to graph on Desmos the focal point and the directrix. And try to have it so that the center uh, so to speak, the vertex of the parabola will be at the origin. But don't actually graph a parabola for now. Just see if you can graph the focal point and the directrix. Did you try it? Let's see what you could have done. So first off, we never really said how far the focus is from the origin and how far the directrix is from the origin. So in these cases, we would want to give a, uh, to assign it a variable, in this case p, uh, a parameter, um, and that distance uh, can change as you adjust p on Desmos. And if you have p be positive, then in order for the line to appear below, that would have to be y equals negative p. So you'd have to know a little bit, uh, remember how to get uh, a horizontal line uh, in order to do this task properly. So the second thing we're going to do is we're going to get a preliminary formula for the parabola that has that focus and that directrix. And we're going to use the definition of a parabola to do this. So a, a definition of a parabola is all the points such that the distance from the focus to the point is equal to the distance from the directrix to the point. And using the distance formula, can you translate this statement into an algebraic formula? So the distance formula is above there. If you don't remember how the distance formula works, you can check out one of the uh, appendices at the end of this video for a refresher on the distance formula. So try to use the distance formula to translate that sentence, distance from focus to xy is equal to distance from directrix to xy, into an algebraic equation. Try it. So if you carefully use the distance formula and you plug in your points, then that's really all there is to this. Uh, the other part is that the point on the directrix is x negative p. So the, the x value is x. And because it's on the line, y equals negative p, the y value is negative p. So that um, point on the line is x negative p. So you very carefully plug in your points, and it doesn't matter which point you use first or which point you use second, um, because when you square it, all the differences are going to be made positive no matter what. So 
If you're careful enough, you'll have some sort of version of this. Now, depending on order, yours might look a little bit different, but it shouldn't matter in the end. And the only thing that might make a difference is the order in which you put some of these things. Uh, so you'll see whether you're right if you try uh, the next task. So believe it or not, this formula, as kind of unattractive as it is, is actually enough for on Desmos, uh, the parabola to be formed. This is not a nice version of the formula. It is unsimplified and uh, rather inelegant, but this is a formula for a parabola. And so our last task is going to be to make this into a slightly more elegant formula. So task number three, take this formula for a parabola with a uh, vertex at zero, zero and distance from the focus to the vertex P and simplify it as much as you possibly can. So try it. You might not get all the way with it, but it's really important for you to try it yourself first. Can you simplify this thing? So we are going to uh, go over the algebraic steps of how to simplify this. First, you can square both sides. Um, both sides are square roots. Squaring is the opposite of taking a square root. So you can simply eliminate the radicals entirely. And the other change that I made was I made the y minus negative p into y plus p. Some of you probably did that already. That's fine. Uh, so now what should we do next? And unfortunately, um, we need to be able to expand binomials and not be scared of it. So if you were got to this stage and then stopped because you were afraid of going any forward, uh, going forward, you got to push on ahead. You expand the binomials. If you do not know how to expand a binomial or multiply an expression by another expression, then see one of the appendices at the end, append appendix number two. So what to do next? You have this longer thing. You can notice that there are the same things on both sides being added. So you can subtract those things from both sides, which is a legal algebraic move. You get x squared minus 2py is equal to 2py and then x squared minus 2py equals 2py. You can simplify this a little more if you want by adding 2py to both sides to get a rather nice formula. x squared is equal to 4py. So this is the formula for parabola with vertex of 0, 0 and the focal distance from vertex to focus or from vertex to directrix uh, p is x squared is equal to 4py. Notice that in this formula, there's no y squared term. There's only an x squared. And this is consistent with what we demonstrated in the last lesson. For a parabola that is either fully vertical or fully horizontal, in other words, it's not like those rotated uh, parabolas that we briefly saw in the last lesson. Only one of the variables can be squared, but not both. And in fact, if you want to have a horizontal parabola, it's the y squared uh, is going to be the uh, squared term and x is going to be the one without a square. Next time, we're going to talk about shifted parabolas whose vertex is not at the origin, as well as gain fluency uh, manipulating this formula. Until then, have a great day. And if you were confused about some earlier skill required in the lesson, the appendices are going to occur now. Appendix number one, the distance formula. So if you want to find the distance between two points in uh, 2D space, the formula to find the distance is basically the Pythagorean theorem. And we're going to do this twice so you get the idea. The Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And the distances are clearly 2 and 4. So you just plug them into the formula. And you can take the square root of both sides at the beginning to make it slightly easier. Um, and you get the square root of 20 is going to be c. So this is pretty elementary if you know the Pythagorean theorem. And if you don't know that, then you should uh, watch videos on the Pythagorean theorem until you have the idea. Um, but what if instead of calling it by uh, A, B, C, or by 2, 4, and, um, and, C, and whatever the answer is, square root of 20, we called it delta x, delta y, and d. So delta x, delta in math means change. And so the change in x is literally the distance uh, between uh, in the bottom side of that triangle and delta y is the distance of the tall leg the vertical side of the triangle and it's equal to d squared so all we did was we changed the uh, pythagorean theorem and gave it new names and if we took the square root of both sides we would get what is essentially the distance formula 
Now, this delta x, the only thing that's left is to say, how do we find the distance between the x values of those two points? How do we find delta x and delta y? And the answer is, uh, we use the two points we're given in green, x1, y1, x2, y2, whatever they happen to be. And delta x is the difference of the two x values. And delta y is the distance of the two y values. So all we need to do is carefully plug in the points into the formula, and we won't even need to draw a triangle or, and visually see how long the sides are. We can just do the math. So 5 minus 3 is uh, 2, and 6 minus 2 is 4, just like in the first one. And you can, just if you have the points, not draw a picture and get the answer algebraically. So that's what the distance formula really is. Appendix number 2 multiplying expressions containing uh, multiple terms. So this is about expanding algebraic expressions. And first we're gonna do a concrete example that might be uh, kind of insultingly easy, but it's good to do things concretely first and then algebraically. So suppose you want to multiply two plus three plus four, that whole thing times five plus six. And most people in the circumstance would add first, two plus three plus four is nine, five plus six is 11, and you multiply to get 99. But the other way is important. The other way is first you multiply every term in the first expression by every term in the second, and then you add all of them together. And teachers teach this in different ways. I'm very partial to teaching it with a box. Even though it's inefficient, it, it really gets the idea across. So when you multiply, you're really finding the area of something. And so you write all the terms of the first part on the top and all the terms of the second expression on, uh, on the side, and you multiply all of these as if it was a little multiplication table. And then you'd multiply all, you'd, sorry, add all the results, and then you'd get 99, which is the same answer. Now, why would anyone do it this way? Uh, for numbers, it's really, there's no point of doing it except to understand. But in terms of algebra, sometimes this is the only thing you can do to simplify something, and in, it was needed for the example we did uh, for the parabola. So let's look at an algebraic example. Um, so what if someone said expand x minus p squared? Well, first of all, see if you can just try the box method that we just debuted, um, but apply it to this. You might not, not know exactly what to do, but try it out a little bit. Okay, so hopefully you're beginning to realize that that's the sign to pause the video and try it. Hopefully you did. Um, so x minus p squared is the same thing as x minus p times x minus p, because that's what it means to square something. You just multiply it by itself. And so one of the terms is x, and the other term uh, is negative p. This is the same thing as x plus negative p. So we can have one of the things on top being x, the other be negative p. And so when we multiply them, we'll get x squared. Two of them will be negative px. And uh, the other one will be p squared because negative p times negative p will become a positive and a number multiplied by itself is squared. And then you simply add these things together. There are four things you add them. I'm writing all the plus signs, even though when you get more fluent, you won't have to. And uh, so all those plus negative px's turn into just a minus and you combine like terms to get x squared minus 2px plus p squared. Uh, and one advantage of the box method is that the diagonals are really significant that if you put things in, in a nice order, usually there'll be some sort of nice pattern to the box. Although, again, uh, there are many different ways to learn how to do this. And, the you know, at a certain point, you will not need to write to the boxes once you get enough practice. 